The goal of a bolted joint is to establish and maintain enough initial compression in the joint so that the joint does not separate under external loads. In a well-designed joint, the initial compression in the joint is achieved by preloading the bolt. A common procedure is to apply a high preload to achieve as much as compression as possible without causing the bolt to yield. The limiting value of this preload is determined by taking the proof load and the proof strength of the bolt into account. From our previous definitions, we know that proof strength and tensile stress areas of common bolts can be obtained from reference materials on bolted joints. So determining the payload for a given bolt is a straightforward process. But how do we know whether the payload will be sufficiently high to prevent the joint from separating once the external loads are applied? To answer this question, we can turn to a force balance of a bolted joint. It is dependent upon two factors, the bolt stiffness and the member stiffness or the stiffness of clamped parts. We call that when applying a preload to the bolt, we are including stress in the bolt such that we are very close to the yielding the bolt. As such, we want to design a bolted joint such that most of the external load is carried by the clamp members. When the stiffness of the clamp parts is much larger than the bolt stiffness, the majority of the external load goes into reducing the compression in the joint rather than increasing the tension in the bolt. Joint diagrams are developed to help visualize this behavior. Under a given preload, the tension in the bolt must equal the compressive force in the clamp members for static equilibrium to exist. Once the bolt preload is applied, the force displacement diagram for the bolt and the clamp parts is shown here. The slopes of the two lines represent their respective stiffnesses. The approximate bolt stiffness can be calculated using this formula where A is the tensile stress area of the bolt, E is the Young's modulus of the bolt material and L is the grip length. Calculating the member stiffness is slightly more involved. Each clamp parts act as a compressive spring and the total member stiffness is calculated by considering that these compressive springs act in series. If one of the clamp parts is a soft gasket, its stiffness relative to the other members is very small and hence this term dominates in the given formula. In such cases, all other terms can be ignored and the member stiffnesses can be approximated to the gasket stiffness. In the absence of any gasket, we use the observation that pressure in the clamp part stay high till about 1.5 bolt radii and falls off farther away from the bolt forming a pressure cone as shown here. The half apex angle of the pressure cone is used to calculate the stiffness of each clamp part. In most cases, the half apex angle is between 25 and 33 degrees. Assuming an alpha of 30 degrees, the stiffness of one clamp part is given by this formula. Since we have two plates of equal thickness and same properties, we get the same stiffness for both the clamp parts and using the spring in series formula, we get the total member stiffnesses as shown here. The bolt extension and the compression of the clamp parts depends on the applied preload and their respective stiffnesses. The origin of the joint compression line is moved such that points J0 and B0 coincide to form a triangle. This is the joint diagram. Now let's assume that an external force F is applied on the clamp part. This force F reduces the clamping force on the joint by delta Fj and increases the load on the bolt by delta Fb. The new states of the bolt and the clamp parts can be represented on the joint diagram by points B1 and J1. The changes in forces delta Fb and delta Fj need to fulfill two conditions. First, the total external load F is distributed between the bolt and the joint. Hence, delta Fb and delta Fj should add up to F. 
secondly the change in deformation of the bolt and the joint due to delta fb and delta fj respectively should be the same this gives us another equation by solving the two equations simultaneously we can calculate delta fb and delta fj here c is the fraction of the external load carried by the bolt while 1 minus c is the fraction of the external load carried by the members